Hello there. Mm, this is section B. The AC questions for this paper, biology paper two, are GCE paper for the year 2021, biology 25090. So I straight up will go to question A. Um, answer three questions, but we'll answer everything. We'll try and answer everything to just have a broader or maybe vast, um, you know, perception of how everything could be answered and um, just know as much as possible. Define aerobic respiration. My answer is right there, straight to the point. Breakdown of sugar in the presence of oxygen to yield water, carbon dioxide, and energy. Okay, that's aerobic respiration. Uh, B. Describe the production of adenosine triphosphate in cells in cells of living organisms. That is 6B. My explanation is that the energy yielded from respiration in mitochondria is locked up or stored in bonds of ATP. First, it is um, adenosine monophosphate. Then addition of another inorganic phosphate makes it adenosine diphosphate, then eventually adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP. Therefore, at first it's AMP, ADP, then ATP. And so ATP is an, in, an unstable energy storage molecule, which readily breaks down to, re, to liberate energy when needed. That would be our 6B explanation right there. Uh, 6C, compare and contrast respiration in plants to that in human beings. Um, respiration is the breakdown of sugar to yield energy. Uh, it is divided into aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen and results into complete oxidation of sugar to yield carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Um, the carbon dioxide is broken, I mean, it's breathed out together with water while energy is used for various processes. This occurs the same way in plants and animals. Okay. Whatever I've explained up here occurs in the same way in plants and animals. Uh, the next paragraph here reads, starting from here, aerobic respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen, anaerobic I mean, in the absence of oxygen to yield less amounts of energy and intermediate substances. In animals, anaerobic respiration results into the yield of little energy and lactic acid. Lactic acid is only broken down when oxygen is finally supplied or available. Uh, anaerobic respiration, um, anaerobic respiration, uh, when anaerobic respiration, when doing prolonged tiresome activities like playing football, anaerobic respiration occurs. I'm supposed to say occurs, occurs or happens here yeah, when you're doing prolonged tiresome activities. Lactic acid here can lead to collapsing or muscle cramps. Okay, that is in in animals or in humans. In plants, anaerobic respiration results into yield of little uh, or limited energy and alcohol. Okay, to take note in animals, it's lactic acid in plants is alcohol. Uh, this can even be referred to as fermentation of some kind. Therefore, ethanol is further oxidized to water and ox uh, water. I mean, water and carbon dioxide and more energy when oxygen is finally supplied. Anaerobic respiration in plants is also called fermentation. In both plants and animals, respiration occurs in the mitochondria. So the two differ in the way anaerobic respiration takes place. Although again, when the ethanol is left out there uh, by itself, um, it can easily turn to ethanoic acid due to action of bacteria. Okay, bacteria, therefore it would be oxidized to ethanoic acid. But the thing is, um, in plants, it may accumulate, but later on, it will be broken down to, uh, to, to, to simply produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Uh, question 7, the internal structure of the heart. Describe the internal structure of the heart. That is 6 marks. Then explain the causes of coronary disease. Then number 2, that is B2. Explain ways to prevent coronary disease. 3, 3, that is 12 marks. Let's get to question 7, solutions. Okay, so I could only think of this as I was trying to read and write. Uh, 7a, the heart is divided. There's supposed to be E's here. The heart is divided into two halves by the septum. Each half is divided into two chambers, one auricle and one ventricle. Each, each atrium or auricle, okay, an, an auricle, 
okay sorry about that wind through the window an auricle is also known as an atrium so each atrium and ventricle is separated by an atrioventricular valve therefore the right and left um, atrium and ventricle are separated by an atrioventricular valve the atrioventricular valve on the right half is called the tricuspid valve and the one on the left um, on the left atria and ventricle is called the bicuspid uh, valve also known as the mitral valve the the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs while the pulmonary uh, via the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle pumps blood to the rest of the body therefore here i'm supposed to say and the and the left the left ventricle pumps blood to the rest of the body so i'm supposed to re remove this and say left so the right ventricle i mean the right ventricle to the lungs then the left ventricle pumps blood to the rest of the body the systemic uh, the systemic circulation uh, via the aorta at the emergence of the pulmonary artery and aorta are semilunar valves called pulmonary and aortic valves respectively that would be my de description of the uh, internal structure of the heart and i think i got all the marks there okay so i move on to question b2 which is question 7 b2 i mean b1 and 2 so um um a small blood okay let me just say let me just read the question again question b1 reads explain the causes of coronary disease heart disease the answer is a small blood circulatory pathway of of the three is the coronary circulation the smallest blood circulatory circulation okay circulation i, I wrote circulation here circulation pathway uh, of the three therefore there is the pulmonary circulation there is the systemic circulation and there is the coronary circulation there are two coronary arteries i mean there are two coronary arteries which supply blood arteries arteries where you we supply blood uh, to the heart uh, we supply blood to the heart after breaking away from the iota if any of these arteries or both are blocked by fat deposits or blood clots um, then a cardiac arrest may result this is referred to as coronary uh, heart disease cardiac arrest may not happen at once but it can be something which can be prolonged you're not feeling fine for one two three four five days one week three days you you are always having these problems and then the reason may be because of accumulation of fat uh, or a blockage somewhere within the coronary arteries. Number two, prevention of coronary disease includes regular exercising, avoiding fatty foods, especially animal fat, which may, um, which is um, rich in cholesterol. This is supposed to be rich, okay, which is rich in cholesterol. Uh, the other is to watch one's weight, okay? one's weight and, pre and prevent excessive gain in weight okay you pre you pre you prevent excessive gain in weight but because it will promote you yourself uh, synthesizing uh, the same fats we're talking about which are from other animals so you can easily develop and synthesize your own fats which may cause problems in the future uh, we'll get to the next question Okay, so question 8a, explain using named examples the following terms cranial reflex, conditioned reflex, spinal reflex uh, I explain. My explanations are as below. Uh, question 8A1, a cranial reflex is one whose reflex arc lies in the head region uh, or in the brain. They are more complex than spinal reflexes. reflexes. Examples are blinking, sneezing, coughing, yeah. Number two, a conditioned reflex is the, is the most complex of the three uh, main types, okay? The three main types. The three main types it is a type of reflex that prevent that that is that is perfected through practice okay that is perfected through practice and examples are riding a bicycle car driving balancing your weight on on your arms like you your legs up arms down then you're walking on your arms okay that is a, a conditioned reflex when you overdo it, you will stop thinking. You can easily flip. You can easily do this. You can even do those somersaults and and such stuff. Uh, finally, spinal reflexes are those which are those whose reflex axes lie in the spinal cord. They may include arm 
withdraw from my hot object and the knee jerk okay when you hammer the knee when you're relaxed seated with your legs not stepping on the ground um when you hammer at a certain position on your knee the knee will actually kick back the leg will actually kick back so these are examples of the three definitions of the three reflexes and um, uh, examples uh, um, examples of the three question 8b here 8b reads um explain why each of the following reflex actions are important to the body uh, of an organism cranial and conditioned so i come back to b here cranial reflexes aid in quickly avoiding head or eye injuries they help prevent infection through sneezing and coughing then b conditioned reflexes help organisms master specific activities like swimming important for survival and avoid relearning the same activity every time it is required sections i mean question 8c 8c reads i think this paper was loaded because i had a lot of things to write describe how an impulse is transmitted from one neuron to another two marks that is 8c two marks so see uh, the gap between two joint neurons is called the synapse an impulse is passed from one neuron to another via the synapse synapse with the aid of a neurotransmitter materials neurotransmitters of different are of different types okay neurotransmitter chemicals are of different types some synapses are electric therefore do not use chemicals to pass an impulse otherwise that is how um, uh, an impulse is passed on from one neuron to another through chemical uh, substances known as neurotransmitters and sometimes through electrical uh, uh, electrical modes okay ways electrical discharge and recharge therefore electrical uh, pathways so we have got a chemical synapse and an electrical synapse we get to question nine Whew, i feel tired this question paper was loaded or maybe it's because we're answering all of them that is why yeah, yeah i think so so question nine explain the importance of fungi okay fungi kingdom fungi uh, fungi is a kingdom of organisms that are saprophytic in nature. Some feed on dead organic matter and others on living organic matter. By saprophytic, we mean they release enzymes into the substrate then absorb end products. Since most fungi feed on dead organic matter, they aid clean up the environment of dead organisms through decomposition, therefore they are decomposers, and in the process, aid to recycle nutrients in nature. Okay, some fungi produce chemicals which can be used as medicines, and some fungi species are also food for animals and other organisms. That is um, uh, the importance of fungi. I get to the next question. Uh, that is 9b. Distinguish between sexual and uh, asexual reproduction. So, B there reads, sexual production is one in which involves gametes, therefore sex cells. It results into offspring which are different from each other and their parents. Sexual reproduction involves two organisms, male and female, and has chances of not passing on genetically acquired disorders. A sexual reproduction does not involve gametes. It may involve budding, spore formation, or runners, etc. It results into offspring that are identical to each other and their parents genetically, of course. A sexual reproduction uh, is achieved via one organism, and if it has genetic disorders, they can be passed on to their offspring. Okay, that is my take on number 9b, which was reading distinguish between sexual and asexual reproduction for Max. The last question there is um, and C, uh, question C, 9c. Uh, with named examples, describe the features of animal dispersed seeds. With named examples, describe the features of animal dispersed seeds. So we have to think of seeds that are dispersed by animals and what features make them be suitable for this mode of dispersal. Animal dispersed seeds have tough testers. A tester is the seed cover and are contained in delicious fruits. So firstly, a tough seed cover to prevent it from digesting, being digested by enzymes. Then secondly, delicious fruits to attract the animals. An example is a guava fruit. After ingestion, the fruit flesh is digested um but the seeds not by but 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 the seeds remain intact to germinate uh anywhere the animal uh ingests okay this is supposed to be anywhere where the animal defecates or ejects ingests other animal dispersal seeds have st structures on them e.g hooks which enable them cling to animals or animal fur and get dropped anywhere far from the parent plant an example would be 
e.g. black jack okay black jack that will be our example we move on now finally to the to the last question which is question 10 so question 10 reads explain the meaning of the term conservation and then number b identify the importance of conservation uh, or conserving plant and animal species and then c describe the importance of sustainable use of resources so we go to a explain the meaning of the term conservation uh, my take or my explanation here is conservation is the preservation of resources which might um, which might be finite or infinite okay finite means they can finish infinite means they cannot really finish for example rivers a river may not really be may not really dry some rivers are so big like the zambezi uh, the amazon you can we can contaminate it but it won't really finish so you still need to conserve it even if it doesn't finish you cannot just go ahead and contaminate it because it doesn't finish so conservation is actually preserving okay to conserve is to preserve uh, number b the question reads um identify the importance of conserving plant and animal species i had um, a handful of, of things to write about on this part b plant species are of various importance to life on earth uh, conserving them will generally improve rainfall patterns and recycling of gases. Some plants have medical properties and others are food to various animals. Conserving plants also prevents extinction, thus, uh, extinction thus um, main, uh, maintain a balance, maintain a balance in the variety of species. Conservation of animals uh, species aids not to break the balance in the uh, interdependence in the food chains. Okay, it also ensures the upcoming generation's chance to see varieties of animals which would otherwise be extinct. Also, most animals are of use to man in various ways, e.g. wake horses, guard dogs, chickens for food, etc. Therefore, when I say uh, on this part where I'm talking about uh, breaking uh, the interdependence in the food chains, uh, it would be like uh, if you kill, for example, a lot of uh, grasshoppers, you'd be affecting birds that... Uh, feed on grasshoppers, birds to whom grasshoppers are, 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 are a significant portion in their diet. So you don't just kill frogs, you don't just kill snakes. You have to think of uh, our food chains, because if you kill a lot of snakes, then it means the populations of rats or rodents will actually increase. So you have to maintain those balances. And also for us, just for the coming generations, just have a, a feel or a, a view of, of some of these animals, because if they go extinct, they will never ever reappear. Um, they were created and think once they came into this cycle and if they go into extinction, they will never come around, maybe in a million years. So, question 10 C, describe the importance of the sustainable use of resources. Uh, this will mark our end of this paper. I've gone for about 18, 19 minutes. Yeah, I've talked too much. See, sustainable use of resources refers to the mindful usage of resources. Okay, non-renewable resources have to be utilized with minimized wastages, e.g. petroleum. Okay, that is sustainable. You don't just burn petroleum anyhow. For the renewable resources, usage uh, with care still has to be practiced. Those that can be replaced should be in time, e.g. forests. So you have to be mindful in the way you use forests. Therefore, uh, describe the importance of sustainable use of uh, resources. It helps us conserve, okay? It helps us conserve these resources. And um, uh, in, the, in the process, uh, make them last much longer, okay? They, they, they tend to last much longer and we, we tend to use them uh, to our benefit um, for longer periods of time in years than if we were to use them carelessly. This marks the end of my solutions to this biology uh, paper 2. Uh, that's a 2021 GCE paper. Uh, I'll see you in another paper but for now uh, let me say bye um, and um, bye.